You know, uh, Zudi Jasser is a great man. He's a statesman. He runs a wonderful organization. And he's out there in public. And he's trying to make the case. He's trying to make the case for for assimilation, for Americanization. And he's a man of deep faith. He's a Muslim. And he's president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Zudi Jasser, how are you, my friend? I'm great, Mark. But, you know, you're the great one. Thanks for having me on. I, I love what you do and I appreciate the opportunity. Well, thank you, Zudi. You know, uh, the president named a mountain after me. He calls it Denali, the great one. Uh, but that's a whole other story. Zudi, I want you to listen to this imam. I don't know who this man is. He was on Hannity TV the other night. I want you to listen to him because I think you've been saying the same thing, if not something similar, for many, many years. And it just resonates. Let's go ahead and take a listen. It's clearly a kind of uh, overreaction by many American Muslims to Mr. Trump's statements. The truth is that he definitely uh, concerned about some security, some safety, some peace that is happening due to Muslims or Islam being associated with many of these radical terror, uh, terror groups and individuals that are popping in the country or different countries from time to time so that I would assume I would assume any type of safety security measure to basically hold on make us understand what is really going on that would be I would really consider it as a very wise move towards holding any Muslims immigrations or even visitors until we know that all Muslims really understand what it takes to live in the West country Western countries or United States one of the challenges that we face here is that most Muslims don't understand there is a Sharia law and or what we refer to it as Islamic law that is pertaining to live or living in the United States meaning the Sharia law that you learned in your country is not the same Sharia law that you will have to behave with or work with in this country the roots are the same the same holy book the same reports from Prophet Muhammad but the truth is it's still uh, the issue is a matter of different backgrounds from different places it's really hard for any intelligence to understand what those people really look all right let me bring on situation all right so so zudi i'm not interested in getting it caught up in this trump debate and everything else but his point which i think is pertinent which is very important which i think you've been making over the years is this there are some people overseas who embrace sharia law one way and there's some people who embrace it another way. And when you embrace it one way, you can create violence and promote hate and so forth and so on. When you embrace it another way, you're tolerant. Uh, You you, you explain it. Am I right? Is he right? Yeah, I think there's, there's so much truth in what he said. And the question is, is what is the threat? And let's thread the needle. I think both sides so far are looking at Islam in a monolithic way, and the imam clearly laid out there's huge global political movements that are called Islamists. They won elections in Egypt. They're running Saudi Arabia. They're running Iran. So you're talking hundreds of millions out of 1.6 billion that are now in power that are filling vacuums because we've been absent after the Arab awakening. So as a result, we have to filter, just as in the Cold War, we asked about whether they were members of the Communist Party, not only about the Soviets, but whether they're members of the Communist Party anywhere. We connected the two. So until we start connecting Islamism, Wahhabism, Jihadism to the threat, we are at risk. But the question is, Mark, is what is our greatest weapon? Our warriors for freedom, like our Muslim reform movement, 15 organizations that met last Friday, did a press conference, uh, from Europe, Canada, America, we assembled them, did a press conference, and we said, we are ready to be enabled. The, the left is looking at it in a monolithic way, taking their talking points from the Qatar Foundation, and some on the right, unfortunately, I think it's surrender to say that Muslims can't be and should not be leading this. Yes, we should put a pause on all immigration, but if we message that we're going to stop just Muslims, it is actually surrender to the very ideas that founded this country of religious liberty that is the only weapon. Otherwise, we're just doing a military whack-a-mole program all over the world unless we start working with Muslim reformers and we tell the world that America is going, just like our founding fathers fought theocracy, why can't we enable and say, you know what, we're going to do tough love with the Muslim community. We're going to filter for those that are theocrats or apologists for it and not let them in. But those that believe in secular governance, 
we're not only going to win, we're going to help them lead a movement for reform against theocracy. Has anybody in this administration ever consulted with you? No, and this is the sad thing, is that our declaration... Well, I just want to make a point. But they consult with CARE, which is a radical organization, is it not? It is a terrorist-enabling organization that seems to always be close to uh, the uh, conveyor belt of radicalization, which starts in a separatist idea, anti-Western, anti-Semitic, and they're part of the problem. And they got their birth, really, out of out of this Hamas front group operation, in a meeting in Philadelphia. And but I want I want you to tell me about your group and these other Muslim reform groups, because I don't think we hear enough about this. We really don't. You know, our Muslim reform movement is bipartisan, nonpartisan. It includes leaders like uh, Ezra Nomani, uh, a journalist uh, who knew Danny Pearl, Raheel Raza from Toronto, Nasser Qatar, a parliamentarian from Denmark who's Muslim. We signed a simple two-page thing with three areas. One that said we reject apostasy laws, blasphemy laws. We believe Sharia is man-made. We reject the institutionalization of Sharia. We reject violent jihad. We believe in the secular nation state. We reject not only ISIS, but all Islamic states. We reject the caliphate. And we went to the mosque on Massachusetts Avenue in Washington, D.C., and taped it on the door, took video as they ripped it down. We're going to take it to every Islamic institution in the country. If they sign on, they're part of the reform solution. That'll be no different than, you know, the, the example of Martin Luther. If they don't sign on, they're part of the obstruction, the obstacles, the apologetics that is radicalizing our community. This is a crucially important movement that you're generating here that you've been trying to push for all these years. If my listeners want to find out more about this, and I want to post this on my social sites, where do they go? We have a Facebook page, Muslim Reform Movement, a Facebook page that they can like. That's posted our declarations there. We have a declaration they can sign at change.org for Muslim Reform Movement. And our organization, we're one of the, we convened it, but it was signed by many organizations, is AISDemocracy.org. But the best place to start is the Facebook page for Muslim Reform Movement. Uh, Mr. Producer, let us be certain. Okay, we're going to put that on uh, Mark Levin Show Facebook, Mark Levin Show Twitter. We have millions of people uh, when you look at the combined numbers, and I want them to become aware of this. You know, Zudi, I found you. I read about you many, many years ago. Do you remember this? And I brought you on my program. And uh, you've been on other programs since, but in my view, you're a national treasure. I, I, I've got to figure out how to promote you and this reform movement more often. I, so um, I'll tell you what, uh, I have your contact information. You and I are going to talk in the next week or two, and we're going to have to figure out how we promote this more. Amen. This is, we really believe this is the key for media, government, homeland security, everything. It's a two-page starting point that can be the strategy for the next century. But you agree we need to have a strong vetting process, and if we say religion is not an issue, what you're saying is religion shouldn't be the only issue, but it certainly should be an issue that we look at and try and determine who people are and where they're coming from, right? Oh, absolutely. The theocracy is wedded and embraced in religion, and and us reformers can't have a seat at the table unless you call it political Islam. So the, the Hillary narrative or any narrative that calls Islam monolithic lets the jihadists, lets the Saudi government, the Iranian regime dictate what is and what is not Islam. As long as we accept that Islam needs to go through major reforms, ultimately you will allow the House of Islam to begin to have its civil war of ideas that we want to embrace and take on. But we can't do it as long as the, the West is in denial. Do you uh, do you get many threats? May I ask? We do, we do, and you know, just today, out, Mark, uh, there is a, a organization, major one in London, called Hope Not Hate, that listed me absurdly in Breitbart's reporting. This listed me as a a purveyor of hate against Muslims, and basically, I confronted them on Twitter as did Majid Nawaz from Quilliam Foundation, and they said, "Well, I surround myself with anti-Muslim groups, etc." And uh, I, I earned it, and I said, do you realize that I'm a Muslim and that you labeling me as anti-Muslim is like a declaration of apostasy, and in the Saudi Arabian government, I'd be beheaded, and it's a death threat. 
and they said that's absurd, etc. And yet, this is the alliance between the left and the Islamists. They do their dirty work for them. That's a group affiliated with the American Southern Poverty Law Center. They label people hate instead of dealing with our ideas. They had not one single quote that I've said that's anti-Islam or anti-Muslim. And it sort of shows you that the obstacle to the moderate voices of reform is not only from within the Muslim community, it's the left and others that want to continue their alliances with Islamist petrodollars around the planet. You're absolutely terrific. You are absolutely terrific, Zudi, and uh, we're going to have you back more often. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, Mark. Really All right, take it. care of yourself. Be careful. Take care of yourself. You know, when I first spoke to him, I said, this guy is a gem. He absolutely is. He's absolutely a gem. And we're going to put up the Facebook uh, site, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you'll go to their Facebook site. Uh, You will read what they're trying to do, and you will uh, get on that Facebook site as a voice of support, as a voice of support. This man's putting his neck on the line. I mean, almost literally. And so are this, this, this handful of other groups. We say, where are the moderate voices? Here's one of the leaders of the moderate reform movements, and he deserves our support. I'll be right back.